Timing, air fuel. What happens when you miss the tune? Hey guys, Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. Today it's all about the tune or basically lack of the tune. I mean, what happens if you run your motor like at nine to one air fuel? Does it foul the plugs? Does it belch black smoke? Will it refuse to run? What about if we're way off on the timing? I'm talking about 15, 20. No, what if we're off by 25 degrees of total timing? I mean, will the thing even start? Does it run backwards? Does it create some kind of negative singularity? Actually, it's amazing how far off we can be on the tune and have the motor still run. In this video, it's all about tuning. We're going to take a look at two different combinations. One, a naturally aspirated small block Chevy, and then a turbocharged LS. I'm going to show you the effect of timing on both combinations. On the small block, we're going to take a look at a big change we made in air fuel. We went from a 76 jet combination in the carburetor to a 100 jet. That's right. We changed it from 12 and a half to one all the way down to 90 one. Good stuff on that test. Also timing. We swept timing from 36 degrees, which is where that motor wanted to be, all the way down to 11 degrees. So what happened to power when we missed the timing by 25 degrees? On our turbocharge combination, I'm going to show you the effect of both power and the effect of boost. When we change the timing from 18, 20, 22, and 24 degrees on our turbocharged 4.8 liter. Let's take a look. We're going to start out by taking a look at a big change in air fuel ratio. And this was on a carbureted combination. It was actually a small block Chevy. This was a 383 from Blueprint Engines. It was a 383 short block. It had Performer RPM air gaps, uh, intake manifold, a 750 Holley, long tube headers. It had their uh, Blueprints aluminum heads. A typical kind of 383 mild camshaft. And we're going to take a look at the power outputs also. But again, Typical of any kind of small block Chevy, basically. What we're showing you here is the change in air fuel, what happens to the change in power with a big change in air fuel, and then also a change in timing. So here was our, uh, when when this thing was optimized for air fuel, jetting and air bleeds and things on the carburetor, what we did, this we came out with this air fuel curve. So it started out at 12.7, uh, was as lean as 12.9 and then richened up at the top of the RPM range um, down to about 12.0. Still, you know, plenty good. The air fuel was, this is this provided a really good power curve as we'll see in just a second. But I wanted to show you, um, we had 76 jets in this thing on, on both sides. So here's what happened when we changed, we just stuck a lot of jet in it. We put 100 jets in it, basically the biggest ones that we had. And it richened up the motor a lot. I mean, the, our 383 was now down in the nines. It was as rich as 9.1 to 1 and only leaned out to 9.7 to 1. So still way in the nines, richer than anybody would obviously run this thing because obviously it's losing power and it probably is blubbering and black smoke and misfiring, right? Well, that didn't happen. Actually, what happened is it, it just lost power because everything else on the motor was right. So it will actually run at this air fuel um, but let's see what effect this had on power, and we'll take a look at that. So we're changing from 12s to 9s. So this was our power output. Run in the 12s. This thing did, you know, it was a mild combination. I'll go ahead and move this for the power. 467 horsepower. Torque was 477 foot-pounds of torque. And that was run in the with the air fuel ratio in the 12s. Here's what happened when it was down in the 9s. It did indeed lose power, as we would expect. It was really, really rich. But take a look at what the power output was, though. Still, it was making 429 horsepower. Torque was down even less, 451 foot-pounds. So even when the thing was like pig rich, it still ran. It still made power. Um, it's not the way that you'd want to drive it around, and you might eventually <laughs> foul plugs if you're in the throttle a whole bunch and running in the nines. Um, but this thing ran and idled and did all the things. So you can be this far off in the air fuel and still obviously make pretty good power. So now let's take a look at what happens when we change the timing. Now that we've taken a look at the effect of air fuel ratio on our small block Chevy, let's take a look at timing so we can see 
you know, which one makes more of an effect. So this is our combination. This particular motor wanted 36 degrees of total timing. That's where it made best power on 91 octane. Aluminum headed small block again, you know, 460, 467 foot pounds and 479 ish foot pounds of torque. I mean, and 466 horsepower, but that was at 36 degrees. So now let's see what happens when we take timing away. This will probably be the easiest way to see it. So here's what happened when we went down about five degrees down to 31. See, didn't lose a whole lot of power. You know, peak power was only down to 460. So you're talking about, you know, a handful of horsepower, five or six horsepower. Peak torque was, uh, happened at a different RPM, but for still 476 foot pounds. So not a big change in timing. So in that range, <clears throat> you're going to be really close. You're going to be splitting hairs basically. For me, I would tend more to air toward the less timing side and give away a couple of horsepower just to keep it away from the detonation threshold. But here's what happened when we went down even further. And we took big swings at this. So we went down from 31 to 21 degrees. So we, would, we took 10 degrees of timing out of it. And that had a big effect on power. You can see power was all the way down to 409 horsepower. And torque was down to 437 foot-pounds. So having 21 degrees in it, big change in power. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because this is a timing range that you might be running under boost. So you can see when you have, especially on pump gas, if you're taking this much timing out of your NA combination, look how it affects the NA combination. Now it's not gonna affect the, the turbo or the supercharged one quite as much because it's actually gonna want a little less timing but you're starting out quite a bit lower by having to detune the thing, especially on pump gas. That's why it's always a really good idea to run race gas or E85 on your turbo combinations so you can have the timing in it because we see this kind of thing and these kind of changes would actually be multiplied under boost. So our final timing uh, we wanted to show was let's take another big swing and here's what 11 degrees looks like. <laughs> so if you're going from you know, 36 degrees all the way down to 11 degrees and took a ton of timing out. It, it obviously has a big effect on power. I mean, the peak power was all the way down to 318 horsepower. Torque was down not quite as much, but 364 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see timing has more of an effect on power at the top because that's where it really needs the extra timing past the torque peak, less of an effect on the torque. But the interesting thing is that in this combination, this motor still ran. It still runs with 11 degrees of timing. So you can be off by 25 degrees of timing and the motor will still run and it will still make power. It'll still do a full throttle load from 3000 to past 5,500. So the comments I get a lot of times when people are worried about tuning their cars is, well, the air fuel's a little off or the jet's a little off. Well, we were off by 25 jets <laughs> on the carbureted combination and the motor still ran and still took power and, and made dyno runs. So you're not going to be off by 25 jets. And if you are, it will still run. And, and here we're off by, uh, what, what are we off by? 25 degrees of timing. And again, thing still runs, still makes power, still does what an engine does. It just does it with a lot less power. Now let's check out what happened when we change timing on a turbo application. Now let's take a look at the effective timing on a naturally aspirated small block, both with air fuel changes and timing changes. And we saw the timing had a big effect in the air fuel, not quite as so much, even though we went all the way down into the nine, which is obviously a lot richer than most people want. We're going to take a look at timing now on a turbo application, because as we know, everything is better with boost, including this 4.8 liter, which every 4.8 liter obviously needs a turbo. This combination was our 4.8 liter LR4. It was originally a Gen 4 motor. We put Ford's JE pistons in it. They had a slight dome on it. It had a Crane 224 cam, trick flow 205 heads, the truck intake, AccuFab throttle body. And right now we were starting out with 18 degrees of total timing. The turbo kit consisted of our DNA turbo style headers, a uh, dedicated uh, Y pipe with two wastegates on it. We had a CX Racing 76 millimeter and their air to water intercooler on it. And we were running fairly low boost on this thing. I'll go ahead and show you the boost curves in a minute. Um, so with 17, with, with 18 degrees of total timing and low boost, this thing made 539 horsepower and 502 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened as we went up in sequence. 
and we started out by going up two degrees to 20 degrees of timing as you can see it definitely liked the timing it made more power peak power was up to 550 horsepower peak torque was also up 506 foot pounds it likes more timing but be careful you don't want to go to too much timing because then it's going to like it and then it's really going to hate it and you're going to hate yourself for blowing your motor up but here's what happened we went to 22 degrees again more power more power everywhere 557 horsepower not huge gains but still gains 517 foot pounds and our final timing of the day run at low boost and obviously because we had good gas in this thing 24 degrees of timing and it definitely like that 575 horsepower peak torque is up a bit too also to 522 foot pounds as you can see on the 24 degree run we didn't add timing we only had timing past 4500 rpm but it definitely wanted more timing and it does that at low boost you'll see this change a little bit as you go up in boost because it's actually going to want less timing as you go up in boost and as you go up in boost less timing is obviously a lot safer now let's take a look at an interesting thing that happened to the boost curves and i want to get your opinion and you guys make a comment and let me know what you think affected the boost curves So here's where I want to get your opinion. So I'll go ahead and make a comment when we're going over this data. These are the boost curves supplied at each one of these timing levels. And I want you to let me know if you think that the timing level affected the boost or if it's the variation, you know, between run to run and maybe temperature difference in the turbo or something. So this is our boost curve run on our turbo 4.8 liter with 18 degrees of timing. We started it out about 6.2 pounds, rose to a peak of 6.7 and then fell down to 5.8 pounds out here at the very I'm going to go ahead and move this up here fell down to 5.8 here out at 6200 so here's what happened when we did the successive changes in timing this was 20 uh 20 degrees of timing when we put 20 degrees of timing in it, the boost seemingly dropped a little bit and and the thing that's interesting is it dropped a little bit everywhere normally when we see a big change or when we see a change in boost um, from temperature we'll see that more pronounced at the bottom and then they'll kind of even out by the th by the time during the run that the thing gets temperature back in it but this was at 20 degrees here's 22 <clears throat> 22 and 20 seemed like they were very very similar i mean we're still only talking about a difference here of um you know that's only a tenth of a pound so it may look like big because of the scale but it's really not very much and here's what happened when we ran our final run of 24 degrees and with 24 degrees the boost pressure was actually at its lowest point so where the motor this is my thinking here where the motor was most efficient because as we put timing in it we make the motor more efficient um we see a slight drop in boost because the motor itself is more efficient not unlike you know putting a good camshaft in so let me know if you what if that's what you guys think this is or if it's just some kind of other variation and if it is make sure to let me know in the comments what you guys think that variation is again we're only talking about you know 6.5 versus 6.7 so a variation of two tenths of a point or two tenths of um, one pound of boost which is not a lot it looks like a lot here but it's actually not a ton but let me know what you think it is and then we can get to our conclusion okay guys what did we learn from this little adventure on tuning your combinations as we saw very very interesting you can miss the tune by a lot i mean on our carbureted small block chevy we missed by 25 degrees and by 25 jet sizes although not at the same time but you can miss by quite a lot and if everything else is right if you just miss by one of those the motor will still run it will still run wide open throttle you can still make power pulls. you can still accelerate down the street and all of that stuff will still work i get a lot of comments and that's why i wanted to do videos like this is because i get a lot of comments comments from guys and they're, they're like yeah my motor's running terrible it just it misfires it does all kinds of things and they they're blaming it on the carburetor they're blaming oh how far what jets did you use on the thing i'm like it doesn't matter a 76 jet 100 jet anywhere in between the thing will run and not misfire and do what it's supposed to do 
usually what happens is they have some other kind of problem. They have a rocker that's loose. They have a broken spring. They have a bent push rod. They have a bad lifter. They have a vacuum leak. They have something else that's affecting the way that that motor runs. And then they're blaming it on the tune. But as we saw, you can be really far off on the tune and have it still make power. And on the turbocharged combination, not surprisingly, more timing, low boost, it made more power right up to the point where it doesn't want to make any more power. And then it lets all the magic smoke out. So don't keep adding timing on your turbo combination as, as we go up in boost, go down in timing. All right, but you're older, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Remember, the tune is obviously not critical. I'll keep testing.